Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to episode 12 of Rockhold, the Gift of Shadow. So, as you can see, I've been a busy dwarf in between this and the previous episode. While we are going to take a look at the new arrivals... Oh, Rockhoost! I will be going back into this in a hot second, for they are no longer marked as new arrivals. So, Regoth, the... Legendary Blacksmith. So that name rings a bell with me. I can remember a Regoth. So. We have brewers, farmers, soap makers arriving. And even scholars, surgeons and doctors. Muffled. Muffled sounds familiar as well. As does... I don't know, Besmar? Besmar also sounds quite familiar. So there's a lot of new people... New old people arriving, Stakut, a wrestler. So these these uh, are are for sure former soldiers from the last tombs. So mighty reinforcements arrive while we're going over the new things being built. That's really good news. So here we have a completely new wing of apartments. I went quite crazy with the efficiency of the room, and I'm quite happy with it. The apartments are still spacious and large, but uh, why not? And over here, we're right now getting ready to replace the sand with some serious walls, also applying some flooring to this area. In the, in the meantime, we are going to hope that this chamber does flood itself again. I'm somewhat afraid that I killed it, by excavating it too wide, but we'll see about that. It's hard to tell. So we gain a grand total of 17 new citizens just with the last wave. Wow, that is a lot of people. That is also the reason why the city must expand right now. We also will have a nice drowning chamber at the end of this episode, at least I hope so. I can't promise yet, though. So, if we still have problems with filling that chamber, I will have to work a, a, a little bit around with walls and the like. Because currently it does look like evaporation winds. Anyways, so the expansion of the city here, it always looks so funky. That uh, moment when you stop having any walls in there. And uh, slate. I am a little bit unhappy though that our city now looks like a solid yellow blob on the minimap. That's really sad. The minimap obviously cannot differentiate between wall and floor. So there are a few losses in between. I really do like this method where we have the sand marking the spots where the walls will go. I've struggled in the past quite often with uh, how to build city complexes like these, but I feel like I finally have found a method that that just works for me. What do you guys do with any other tricks? So, we are going to go here over that, and once these walls are constructed, we can finally set in some doors. This is also really a lot of slate blocks, but uh, damn, it looks so nice, can I say? Oh, I like this city already. So, it is a huge effort to build the city as we do it here, but at the same time, I gotta say, the payoff is huge. It is really one gorgeous little town, and I really feel quite, quite happy with how it looks. So, what did you silly goofballs do here again? Why is the Suspend Manager disabled? Huh, Eurist? Who did dis disable the Suspend Manager? Tell me. <laughs> I really don't know. Sometimes I must accidentally click on these things. I also wanted to mention that the Expeditionary Quarters uh, furniture has been completed down here. There is now a box for every apartment, and the trend will continue soon. We are right now ignoring the elven trader, because, you know, elven traders, 
I still think the Banner of Shadow has really zero to even negative interest in interacting with the elves. To them, I think the elves are even worse than the goblins. Because, you know, they 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 have a problem with chopping wood. It's a pretty, pretty ridiculous thing for a dwarf. Anyways, here we go. That's that. And I want to create myself a temple back here. It is time that culture and religion finds its way in here. So we have already an Erdem temple established. 90 people in here are Erdem worshippers. This entire culture seems to be completely following one god. Wow. In my previous run, people were a little bit more diverse. Anyways, let's establish a temple to Ral, the god of Earth. So, well, religion doesn't seem to play a big role for Ibis culture at this point. Okay. So, we're going to build ourselves some church stairs, just for, for the fancy looks of it, you know. I'm really bothered by these stair, uh, the, the, the look of these stairs. So, bam, there we go. That'll keep them busy. So, let's see how this works. It's not working at all. This is kind of like depressing a little bit. So, yeah, all right. <laughs> That's so silly. So, okay. I've learned two large rooms with a light aquifer obviously have this problem so we're going to work around that problem now by building chambers we have already realized that this water in here is perfectly capable of filling up small rooms easily it is just this huge room that triggers too much evaporation obviously so we're going to make it uh a small thing again just realized that I have a little bit of a miscalculation here this area has to stay open this is the, the, the pumping area so we got to work a little bit differently so how about that and how about that? looking weird but it should do the trick I really hope it does. <laughs> this is uh, Dwarven Engineering on an, on an entirely new level for me. So, let's see how that'll work out. <laughs> Alright. So, we're now going to insert, insert bridges to make sure that we can open these little chambers. And it, it, these should now fill with water correctly. I don't know if I'm making up, my, if I'm making a fool of myself here right now, but uh, let's try it. I mean, after all, I'm doing it so you don't have to. So there we go. But that should limit the impact of evaporation somewhat, if not entirely. So, meanwhile, we're going to go and install ourselves some sweet flooring for the machine room. So back here, we're going to have all the necessary lever work for this. Because right now, obviously, our plan does not really go that well because all of the chambers are open, obviously. So, yeah. We're now going to install the master lever. All right, and I've decided that we're going to stop hiring main staff for the time being. Wait until somebody emerges, story-wise, maybe. And henceforth, we're going to follow, or our dwarf of the day will now follow the life of our main crew, just like I did it with Sandwalls. I really hope that this will work now. I, I really feel like... This worked so well before I before I screwed up. <laughs> well, 
well, let's see. It should do the trick now. So all the bridges now get wired up with that lever. And hopefully we're going to be able to do something similar like I did with my irrigation system. That's the idea. If it doesn't work, I... I have to dig out a new chamber, obviously, because I, I messed up with that one. But I don't think that was, this will be necessary. Alright, I also realized that we could use this murky pool. You know? So... Well... I'm really tempted to. Well, we got other problems for the time being. So, is the machine room fully linked up? Not yet. Alright. But I do see that the water snakes out from this room. So, if this bridge would be closed up, I am pretty positive that there would be already enough water being produced to keep the water level rising in here. So, that should work. That should work. Yeah. Adventures with Water. I love this game for these mechanics, as this is very unique, and I don't know any other game doing it that uh, inter such interesting things, and it's fun at the same time. It's not to like about it. So, over here, we see people catching their well-deserved Zs. Ah, well, there's still so much to be done here on the other side of the of the map as well. So let's head back to the expeditionary quarter and see whether or not our stockpiles are going well. Yeah, it looks good. The only thing that doesn't look good is the, uh, is, is the Gabbro, but I am not surprised at all about that. The Gabbro, after all, is just a very scarce resource in this fort. It is always quite amusing to me to see how in some forts, some stone types are abundant, and in other forts, they are really hard to catch. Okay, so now we can finally flick the switch. So here's the sad thing, your soldiers don't flick switches, <laughs> because they're too busy. So now the water will, will stop leaking out of the chambers and start filling the chambers. Evaporation won't happen anymore, and once the chambers are full, I'm just going to drop the bridges, fill the chambers, raise the bridges once more, rinse and repeat, until we have this uh, room here finally filled enough, so we can start pumping stuff up here. Well, it is a lengthy process, after, I guess. Good. So, there is one other thing in the machine room that is important. And this is the, uh, the drain. So, well, we're, we're here. We need to link up the drain as well. Because once the trap is done, I mean, I really hope that the size of this is large enough. Ugh, I tell you what, I want a larger basin. So, we're going to go for it like that. Or will we? I mean... I shouldn't go too big. Nah, let's stop myself. We will go for a test drive for the entire system before we uh, actually kill one single goblin with that. I see. I, I can't really imagine that we can field this weapon without a, without a test drive. So maybe we will have to make the, uh, the flooding chamber a little bit smaller. I don't know. Maybe it does need some redesign. We'll see about that once it's uh, ready. But now, let's see. Well, these two rooms look quite promising. It seems as if it is not everywhere equally successful. That is a weird thing. Hm. Well, Dwarf Fortress and its uh, in-depth mechanics. Well... We're going to go for one thing, though. I want to take that water here. It is, it, it would be a shame not to. So we're going to set up a door before, yeah. Stop, <laughs> it's not 
time yet. So we need to head back to the machine room then. Construct yet another lever. Yeah, that's why I called it the machine room. <laughs> okay, but this will be a glorious way of defending Rockhold. Because technically, there is, uh, well, the only limit is the amount of goblins that we can lock up in this room and drown them, basically. It's, that's that. All right, so here's the door. Door is important to keep the water away. And that door will be linked here. But, uh, you know what? I'm gonna wait for that. I'm gonna wait with that to, uh, to that moment. So let's see how much water we can actually extract out of this uh, chamber here. Alright. So that's that. Let's block it. The problem now is that this chamber provides entrance to the fort. I don't like that. So we're going to use this water here and let's see how well that works. Oh, we can't, we can't, we can't. So <laughs> there's yet another thing that we need to wire up. So we might be linking this fella up here. Why not? Do like the looks of that. So today, as you see, there is a there is a lot of uh, tinkering in that regard. So what I'm trying to do now next is I'm trying to uh, soak up that water into the chamber here. We're also going to need a door up here. I just realized. All right. Very, very excited. Okay, so that's done. Now we just need two more levers for the doors. And then we're going to slurp up that water into our weapon. So... That lever goes for this door, but uh, we're going to pause that job. It's not the important job. The important job is this one. All right. A vile force of darkness of boys. You too early. Jeez, I'm not ready for you yet. What a pity. What? So we will pull the lever and assign all the civilians. Activate the burrow. And let's see if the lever thingy worked out. Because we're not going to go anywhere. Alright, the first gobs are entering the system. And, uh, well, it doesn't go too well for them. Most of them are... are they, they don't seem to get that far. Oh. Shoot. So I, I accidentally trapped them in there. Boys! Too late! <laughs> All right, so turns out, as it stands, we don't seem to have any issue with the goblins. This fella here, we, we're going to go over the combat lock in a hot second, don't you worry. I... Yeah, so these first three traps stopped the entire siege in its tracks. So that is already a really good thing. That means this card here provides quite some safety already. Nice. Good to know. So let's see what 
what happened to these fools. So here, well, it did miss a couple of them. Here we had a direct upper body hit with a uh, glass disc. You know what body hit in the gla with a glass disc, eviscerating the enemy? And uh, the this this one's heart got exploded, but uh, well, at the same time he was still trying to fight off some of the weaponry that uh, destroyed him. So gotta say, his death was so quick and volatile that he tried to fend off parts of the trap machinery while his heart was exploding. Not bad. Not bad. I mean. <laughs> So we have one severed arm by a corkscrew. That is weird. It's not what you expect to do to do that kind of thing to the gobs. But I think I don't need to look over this any further. This has been a wholesale slaughter. So first off, let's go for that. Next off, um, no, it's milt. I think it's milt metal object. So, friends, we have our first Goblinite. So, I am I am very, very excited. The first delivery of Goblinite has arrived. So, back here we have still two of the gobs. The Cobalt Acts shall act on them. Um, well, never mind. You get me. So, let's see. Let's release our Hounds of War. So that guy will lost the lost a part of uh, the hip and she lost a part of the hip and the leg. So yeah, guess the crossbowman fled to tell the tale. That's okay. Oh, fine. All right. So let's see how much uh, smeltable loot we got ourselves together. So, well, I mean, I am quite happy to see that our machinery is working completely as intended. That is a real, real big piece of news for me. Wait a sec. So, yeah. Eh. Now we got it. I still want to pump that body of water upstairs. So, a tear, the stone worker, withdraws from society. So, it is a little bit late today to go for the dwarf of the day, but that is okay. So, I want to go back to our good friend, Id, the manager, who has been feeding part of the, of the fort. So how is life, Id, lately? He's annoyed about his injury, so... Well, he had a run-in with the Drocodytes a couple of years ago and still suffering from the, from the problems of that. His personality suffered from that. So I really feel a little bit uh, bad for him, but I hope that Thob will take good care of him. All right, Id. So, yeah, injuries and alike in this game do play a pretty heavy role in the life of a dwarf. Poor id. Alright, but the safety of, uh, of Rockhold is really, really proven. We have had, though, some serious issues with the, um, with the Minotaur, so... The Minotaur was still one crazy thing for me. A human caravan is arriving. So, here we go. We're now pumping all the water upstairs. And, well, I hope it won't be victim to evaporation up here. So, as it stands currently, I don't think that we can slurp up that much more. So, we're now going to close the door. Mm. 
and stop the pumping. All right, so, well, we'll see about that. I really have no clue how much uh, evaporation will happen here or not, but uh, let's also unpause this job. Because there's one very, very important thing. There has to be a wall between this pond and uh, my, the rest of my city. All right, a schist scepter has been uh, made and Melville has been re-elected to the mayor. That is uh, one piece of good news, I'd say. Uh, because you, you see, Melville is one of those people where I really feel like he, he deserves to be the mayor here. It is... Uh, Really cool for me to see Melville in this position. So Melville likes Gabro, Nickel Silver, Alpaca Wool. So th this is really cool that he likes Gabro. So we can totally role play that there that this was his decision to to have this whole Gabro uh, <laughs> furniture thing. He likes it so much. So everybody had to have some Gabro furniture. So all these little accidental pieces of roleplay are are excellent. I love that. Okay, so now that's all been dealt with. We have now evaporation happening. But what's going on downstairs here? So yeah, parts of the chambers are filling, parts not. That is really, really weirding me out. So that means this part here it's not producing any water anymore. So that means the water is mostly exuding from the walls. So that's why I gimped myself. This is why this chamber, for example, doesn't make, doesn't make get any progress. This is because here, you see, there's only three pieces of wall. Here's more pieces of wall. So yeah, we have some really interesting uh, science going on here. And let's check with our human friends. I don't know what they have in store for us. I highly doubt that they have anything we might want, but, uh, well. One piece of granite block. Are you kidding me? So, they got different types of cloth. It's uh, probably not the worst offers, but, yeah. Not today, friends. Not today. Maybe another year. Currently, we are very heavily invested in the engineering effort of ours here. So that is a little bit sad that I botched it up like that, but it also means that we can rescue this machinery by just adding in more natural walls here and just flooding the rest of the chambers then. This should work. I don't see any issue with this uh, plan. So let's gather up some more yummy little st things there from the plateau from the outside world it loves to skulk around the fortress entrance and pick up yummies for the fort that's just his kind of thing obviously okay so we drained the pond but it doesn't seem like this here is uh, bothered by that in any form so I think in the next episode we will be able to open up these uh, chambers for the very first time. And we'll tell you what, I want to do one thing here. So we're going to go from here, there. So yeah, this is, uh, you know, this is waterworks. It's always a little bit complicated if you start working water. Huh, okay. Now things get interesting. So, well, obviously we have trouble getting there. So we're going to make it differently then. So nobody will be bothered by an extra production of water. So since I have now finally understood how these things work, obviously I, I messed up my production of, uh, of water. And I'm very sorry towards my former self that didn't know better. So, let's complete that. Alright, that'll be a really nice trick. 
This will provide a nice nifty amount of water for this chamber here. So I guess snaking uh, corridors like these would have been the ideal choice. I messed it up by creating a hallway. Well, afterwards you're smarter. It's always working like that. So, a giant! Guys, so we're going to end with this uh, thing here at this very, very point. Because I really feel like this is just the right moment to do so. So I'll be completing this uh, machine, these machines here in the next episode, and I wanted to say thanks for watching. We're going to continue next time with Giant and see how that'll go out. It'll be very exciting because we have a human caravan, and this is going to be very interesting. And there is also poor Id on the surface, so I want to do one thing. Cancel these tasks. <laughs> All right, friends. See you on the next one. Comments go down below. Uh, thumbs up would be appreciated. Consider subscribing. Check out the description box. There's tons of different things to find there. And, of course, check out Discord, Twitch, PayPal, Patreon, or buy me a coffee. And my channel membership system allowing you to check out all the episodes before they get released once I have them uploaded. Thanks for watching yet again. Thanks for supporting the channel. And I hope you have a mighty good time. See you all on the next one. Bye-bye.